Do you want to press record? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Conversation with Freedom. Today I have a special guest. A special guest. I just met him. He's so amazing. His name is Apiwen Nevo. He's an he's an actor, a diversity coach, and also a motivational speaker. Mr. Apiwe, welcome to the to, to, to my podcast. Thank you, Freedom. Thank you, Freedom. I I hope you are free. <laughs> I am. And ladies and gentlemen, he was he was just telling me about my fist law. Say please, I just <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said my my fist law is the idea that if there is any worst thing that can happen in life, it will pick the worst possible time to happen in. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's so amazing. That's a, that, that's so, so, so I've never heard of Mafis Law. So, uh, yeah, Mafis Law is... Uh, it's, it's something else, man. You can uh, talk to crowds and motivate them, telling them it's possible. And then when you get home, your bills are staring at you, asking <laughs> you a question. Is it still possible? <laughs> and, and there you have to decide. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell. You can tell that it's so amazing and very inspiring. So, Sam, for those people who don't know who Apiwe Nevu is, please tell us more about yourself and where you come from. And yeah. Yeah, uh, let me start like this. I am 34 years old. Okay. And the reason why, the reason why I'm starting like that is that. Some of the things that I'm going to be telling you, you will think that uh, I'm much older than that. But okay. it's, it, it's all fitted into that space. So I was born in the Eastern Cape, Transkai, in a place called Ennobo. Yeah. That's where I was born. And uh, I, cho I choose to introduce and identify myself this way. I know it's not necessarily the only way. Yeah. Uh, I never took school seriously. I never took school seriously at all, uh, to a point that I never passed a grade in my life. Oh. I never had the pleasure of I never had the pleasure of bringing a report form to my mother and say, "This is how I've done this term or whatever," because I've never really passed. I've never really completed exams and stuff like that because of the life I was living, and so. I got involved in crime and smoking ganja at a very early age. And so, like I said, I wasted my youth, as it were. I yeah. wasted my youth. And uh, it was up until 2005 that my father said, I'm not taking you to school anymore. You are a waste of time. Find a way. And I went up to Cape Town looking for a construction work because I... I was in grade nine at that time. It was standard seven. I stopped yeah. in standard seven. But, but the way I got to standard seven, I was just skipping classes. I was just skipping classes, you know, uh, changing schools, telling sobby stories, and teachers would let me in because wow. I was following my friends. As they're, as they're moving on to another class, I'm moving with them. And so I, I, I got to, I was 18 when I got to Cape Town, 2005. And got a job at a construction company. It was hard work. It was not my kind of work. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, it was not my kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so, but the biggest challenge for me was I could only speak my own native language. I could only speak Tosa then. Okay. I couldn't speak English and stuff like that. And so I, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble because even then in the construction site, the foreman, when he's telling someone to pick up a spade, they needed a translator to tell me that. Oh, that they is needed so a translator hard. to tell me that. And so, so I'm trying to paint that picture that it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. And, and uh, it was then that I made a decision that I'm going to learn, I'm going to teach myself English. I don't like the way that my life is going. So reality just hit at that time. It was nice to play and be a, uh, play criminal and all that. But now at that time, I had a daughter. Life was serious. My father and my mother, they were kicking me out of the nest. I was realizing that life is very real. Yeah. 
And that's when I started my journey of learning English. And I learned English through television subtitles. Oh. Uh, when, they, when, when Generation was playing, yeah. when Generation was playing, they speak Zulu, they speak Tosa, Sutu, whatever. I'm writing notes on those subtitles. I'm, I'm writing notes on those subtitles as they are speaking. Wow. And, uh, and also movies. Whenever I watched movies, Jason Statham movies, to be exact, I always make sure that I get some subtitles and I try to speak like Jason Statham. And I didn't know how, obviously. I was just messing it all up. <laughs> I was hell-bent on learning. I was hell-bent on learning. And it was 2007 that I was in George. I had moved from Cape Town to Johannesburg and to George in the space of two years the space of two years. And then when I arrived in George, as I've been learning, yeah. I got a job at the airport as a security guard. I got, okay. I got myself some security, some security grades. I got a job at the, as a security guard. And there was this guy coming from the airport, coming to the airport from the parking lot. Yeah. And then he said, I must help him pick his bag as he's going to check in. Yeah. I grabbed his bag. I walked with him. So he made us some small chat and I replied and he asked me a question. Where did you go to school? And I said, the Eastern Cape, the Eastern Cape. And he said, where in the Eastern Cape? And he started saying Forte University. I said, no, just somewhere there in the Eastern Cape. Because I didn't <laughs> even know what was Forte University about. Yeah. But, but, then, but then it dawned on me that Forte University is where Nelson Mandela went. Went, yeah. And some politician. So I started telling people that I went to Forte University. <laughs> wow. 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 But, but, but what I'm saying is that's when I realized that I had achieved something. That's when I realized that I had achieved something when it comes to this language thing. And so things started getting a little bit easier. You know, I started getting call center jobs. And obviously people would be you know, carried away by my accent and the way I speak English and they would just give me a job and they would find out later that I don't have a metric. But then I would have proven myself. I would have proven myself that I'm good for this job, that I can do this. And so they would be like, you know what, just stay and work until I would walk out on my own. Wow. The last, the last in the insurance business that I've done, I worked for Renmore Investment. I hope they don't mind me mentioning them. Yeah. It's a company in PE while I'm in George. And <laughs> I managed a branch here in George. Okay. I managed a branch here in George of that brokerage firm. So what, what I'm trying to say is I saw my life changing, taking a new shape. I am. And so Apiwe cannot be who he is today without those stories being told. And uh, today I've become an actor. Today I've become a voiceover artist. Today I've become a diversity coach. Today I'm aspiring to be a comedian also. So, so I don't know, I just want it all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and, uh, and I, I'm, I run, I call run, I'm a co-founder of this uh, conversation initiative. Okay. That you may have seen a video on yeah, with yeah. Uh, my part with my partner Brian, and so what we are about there is all vulnerable conversations. We are about being honest, being authentic, yeah. and slowing down, speaking your feelings instead of speaking your mind, because the mind can lead you to places that you don't really feel, but if you can feel, your feelings can always take your mind to where they really are, oh, hey. where your heart is, your treasure will be. When? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I'm actually out of words right now. I don't even know what to say. And ladies and gentlemen, I didn't yeah. know his story. I just met him and we just connected. This is my first time hearing this. So <laughs> don't be surprised when I'm, I'm, I'm amazed and inspired. I'm, I'm just... <sighs> so, sir, what kind of message... No, what, what, what kind of message would you give to someone who's really having a time? Someone who dropped out of school, someone who's 
not doing well in school, someone who's, who's having a tough time getting in. You know, one of my biggest challenges was to believe, and this is something that I'm still overcoming to this day, yeah. was to believe that I matter. That was difficult to really come around, that I matter. And so I would like to say to whoever that is, you have greatness within you. You have something special. You were born to, to occupy and take space on earth and accomplish things and do things. You were endowed with the seed of accomplishment. When you came on earth, you have all that you need. Education is only there to actually sharpen that. Education is only there to sort of stir that up. It's already there. I came to realize that, that even though I don't have these academic uh, accolades, if you will, even though, now, I take my kids to school. I push my kids to go to school because I know how it can parachute you, how it can express you. But I'm saying what I would want to impress upon you is that if you are without education as you would have wished to, you, maybe you need a heart. Maybe you just need courage. Maybe you just need to be a, a lion. Just go and get it then. If you don't want to get it systematically, then just walk and go and get it. You know, I, I walked into coffee shops to hang around white people without ever, only when I was 22, I started going into a restaurant to be served by somebody. And I didn't even know how to say sunny side. I didn't even know what Sunnyside was. And so I went to coffee shops after then just for ice and lemon water, just so I can be in the space where the people that I want to be like one day hang out. I didn't, I didn't want jobs from those people. I wanted association. I wanted friendships because I understood something. If I can have a relationship with you, you would know who I am. You didn't need the qualification from me. Yes. But then... South Africa and its racial nonsense and everything that's happening. Black people believe that I cannot play in that arena. That is a lie. That is a lie. Yeah, Any yeah. arena that people... So, remember, South Africa is a free country. So yeah. you can go into whatever space you want to go yeah. as long as you are going to pay the bill. As long as you are going to pay the bill. South Africa, you can be anywhere. And if you hang around a barber shop long enough, you'll get your hair cut. But stereotypes, stereotypes that goes like, no, that's a place for white people. That's why they stay rich. That's why you stay poor. Yeah. Because you're not getting through. You're not getting past mm -hmm. some stereotype and yeah. some nonsense that uh, we've come to believe now. So I don't want to overwhelm you, my man. But I would say to whoever, don't believe the lie that you don't matter. You are as precious as anyone else on earth. We have one thing in common. We die. Say, I, say. Yeah, so. Yeah, you were saying we, we all have one thing in common. We. Uh, breath and the same hours. We breathe the same air, we have the same hours. It's how we choose to spend those hours that really matters. And I know that this may be sound like a cliche many times to some people that everybody says that every motivational speaker says that yeah. but life is really difficult but i'm i'm telling you the majority of the guys that are standing on the street corners of south africa they have the metric they have the metric i never had metric i never had metric and you know we can start talking about upbringing parents some of the guys that are standing on the streets today they had a good start. Yeah. They had parents who were actually there. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you today, I cannot honestly say I know how parenting feels like. I don't know how to be parented feels like. My father was staying in Johannesburg. My mother was at home, a single mother. But actually, I lost my dad long time ago. I've been with a stepfather right now. And I've known that. And so my life has been on the street. I've never really submitted to the leadership and the directorship of, of of a family structure wherein i would be given tools and be equipped to go and win in life i didn't even have a matrix certificate as a head start 
so 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 if you if you think if you think your situation is worse i would like to say think again yeah i'd like to say think again but at the same time i know that there are real challenges out there we're gonna be ha have to be realistic yes. on the radio yesterday yeah. I'm, 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 it's a so now on the radio yesterday one of the things i was talking about is be hungry stay hungry that's what i was all about because now it's december everybody thinks because there's choice assorted biscuits in the cupboards they think they have arrived that's because <laughs> the year is ending it doesn't mean your life is ending yeah that's, that's because true. there is in 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 egypt in egypt joseph the wisdom of Joseph was, we have seven years of plenty, we are going to have seven years of famine. The brilliant move you can do, make sure, make sure you save enough for that seven years of famine. It just takes common sense. January is next of next week. Yeah. But people are squandering their bosses right now. So it's a mindset thing. Even with education, enjoy later, suffer now. Pay the tuition with your decision, with your life now, because later is more important. When you are old, that's when you need money lying around, man. You have hospital bills, or sometimes you just need a cheesecake on Sunday. Oh. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot, and I'm, I'm very inspired. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm inspired, I'm inspired by you. I'm inspired by you because I'm inspired by you because you got to know what you want to do at a very early age. Yeah. I'm figuring these things all out now because my education started late. A youngster out there, you can have a head start. You can have a head start. And I would like to say this: life punches harder than any punch you've ever experienced. Life will beat you down if you are not ready you better buckle up and be ready because life doesn't care life is going to give you a knockout but it's how you prepare for the mesh that life is <laughs> oh man what are some of what are some so, so, of the, oh, oh, oh. okay go 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 ahead no 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 uh, no you can talk, you can talk. <laughs> I, I I just wanted to ask what, what are some of the challenges that you've come across and the lessons that you would like to share with us <laughs> I'll tell you a story okay I was in Younger East. I was in Yanga East in a place called Emawolwen in Cape Town. Yeah. I was with the, I was I was with these homeboys. You know, I was with these homeboys. You know, most we are village boys and we are locked in this one uh, building and there's yeah. about seven beds. And so everybody is we are sharing, you know, it's bunkers. Yeah. We are sharing and it's when I was still in the construction space. And uh I had made up my mind that I'm going to learn English that time. Okay. And I'm not saying I'm learning English, just a disclaimer. I'm not, le I'm not learning English as a superior language. I'm not yeah. talking about English here as a superior language. Yeah. But it is a language that allowed me to connect with the other. Medium it of is a universal language in the South African context. Yeah. Because today I'm talking to you, you don't understand my tosser, but yeah. we can talk. Yes. It yes. helps us connect. Yeah. So that's why it was important to me. Not because it's a white man's language. Yeah. I, I, I would just like to make that disclaimer, that's all. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, my challenge along the way, one of them was, I was learning English there. So, when you are learning something, you practice, right? Yeah. So, I, I, I've got this phone call while I'm sitting there with the guys. And now this phone call did not really need me to speak in English, but I just wanted to show off something. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started, I, I, I started having the conversation in English. And yeah. so all my homeboys, they don't really know, they don't really know English. Okay. So I'm, I'm sort of breaking out here. I'm sort of breaking out here. <laughs> and the, the, 
And so I broke it. I was speaking broken English. <laughs> but they laughed at me. They laughed at me like I was crazy, man. They <laughs> dogged me. And, <laughs> and that was such a, a low moment in my life. Because I was like, <laughs> Maybe I can't do this. Maybe I can't do this. Yeah. But you know, I was, I was too determined, man. I would uh, just... Uh, one example, I didn't even know what one thing I did to a Nigerian guy also in Cape Town. I went to him. No, 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 no. he was from Ghana. Yeah. I went to him. I was working with him. I said, because he was speaking English so fluently, he was black. So I went to him. I said, Sir, what am I doing when I'm saying, <coughs> and he said, you are, co- said, you are coughing. Yeah. And there I had the vocabulary in my pocket. So, you know. <laughs> So I would, uh, I would be sitting with the guys, and I'd be like, <coughs> "Excuse me, I'm coughing." <laughs> because I'm practicing the word. <laughs> and so, but it was, it was believing that my crazy dreams were possible. And the other challenge yeah. became after I got to speak English. My other challenge became without a certificate, without some credentials, yeah. can you really claim to belong in a space of academics? Can you really belong? Can you really claim to, to say, I belong in the space of experts? Yeah. And so that had to be a, it's a question I'm still answering, by the way. It's because I'm not, you're the first person that I've ever been this outspoken about my journey without oh. shame. With wow. some level of, are you back? Yes, 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 yes. I'm so sorry about the. No, it's fine. You, you'll be all right. Yeah, you were saying. Um, right. I, I don't feel. I, I don't feel. I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> so, so, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, So it was, it was believing that, which was a challenge. It was believing that the things that I have done are ordeals that have really given me the identity and the person that I've become. So where I sit today, even if you were to say, here is a fully paid bursary, I yeah. will feed your family while you go to school. Yeah. I will not take that. I will not take that. I would not trade anything for what I have today. So what I'm saying is believing in myself, even though I don't have the qualifications and believing in myself, even though I'm being ridiculed sometimes yeah. in the face of scoffers, I held my position and I held on to my dream. So the challenge has been to hold on to the belief of that I do matter and what oh, wow. I do does matter. Who are you inspired by? There are so many. <laughs> so many. Okay. So I'll tell you a funny story because so I never met my dad, right? I never yeah. met my biological father. Yeah. So when I went to Cape Town, when I went to Cape Town, I met a lot of people that met him, that knew him, yeah. and that began to say, you look like your father. And these people, they began to say, your father was a great man. And so it's funny because he became my inspiration, even though I never met him, just by hearing that he was a great man. But I didn't know what kind of great he was. Yeah. That, that is still a puzzle to me. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to shoot for the moon so that I, I don't miss whatever he was. So yeah. that I become even higher and above than what he was. I don't know what he was. I, but I know this, that my children will hear stories about me. I know this, that my children will be told things about me. So, mm-hmm. so, so I don't know how great he was, but he was my inspiration. But then when it became to, when it came to, to doing things, when it came to the space of what is done in this modern age, there are a few people that are still alive that really inspired me. First, it would be my church. My pastor became my first inspiration yeah. because he showed me what a father looks like. He showed me love. He, showed, he accepted me, even though I was an ex-con. I've been in prison multiple times, which we haven't even touched. And so 
he showed me how to be a man. And so he would be the first. But when it comes to the professional spaces that I now occupy, there are different people also there. I didn't know that there was a profession called motivational speaking yeah. until I became one, until I called myself a motivational speaker. And then I came across a guy called Les Brown. I held on to Les Brown. I listened to Les Brown over and over. I love the fact that he was adopted, that he was an orphan, that yeah. he was at school. At school, he was labeled uh, mental retarded. Uh, for me, that was nice. That was good stuff. I could relate to that stuff because it's almost like what my journey looked like. And, uh, and so I held on to him on motivational spaces. But then I came across this guy, man, Steve Harvey. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know these are American role models. I, I know these are American role models, but they are real in yeah. the motivational space. I'll tell you this, I love Vusitembe Guayo in South yeah. Africa. But yeah. I but I don't I don't really see myself in him because he's an academic. Yeah. He 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 is a you know so so and nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But I'm just saying for me I come from the Garamos. For me, I come from the jungle. So I need people who have navigated the jungles that I've been through yeah. to lead me out. Yeah. Steve, Steve Harvey. I mean, he, he, had, he has a story himself. He only made it after 35, 36 or something like that, mm, mm, sleeping mm. on his car. Oh, yeah. and education, he was told by his teacher also that he will never be on TV. And that's where he is today. So those are the people. But ultimately, in South Africa, my hero is Nelson Mandela. The great, the icon. Nelson Mandela, the great, the icon. How do, how do you define failure? But I must say, man, Limpompo. Limpompo is in... Okay, 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 okay. Let me talk about Limpompo first. Yeah. You are in Limpompo, right? Yes, I am. You guys are amazing up there. I'll tell you that. Okay. You guys, you guys are amazing up there. They, uh, you look at your villages, man. They are like suburbs. <laughs> your villages, man. They are well built. They are beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. How do I define? Failure. Failure. What's your definition for uh, failure? failure? I would define failure as... Uh, it's not there, actually. Yeah. There's no failure in life. It's, okay. It's, it's, it's no failure in life. In my view, our lives, before we are natural, we are divine. Before we are natural, we are divine. And yeah. so... Your, your divine path. It's a complicated one, but in this age, let me, let me just cut it short. Okay. In this age, I would say failure is the, inabil is the inability to believe in yourself. Failure is when you don't get up again. Yeah. Failure is when you don't get up again in simplicity. But okay. even in that, even in that, the, the, it, failure is a funny thing. Because we have a life and our lives, I believe that the challenges that we face many times is the plot for our lives. Mm. The challenges, the things that we must go through yeah. is the plot for our lives. And mm. many times, many times we think that's failure, but that's just the journey that your life has been chosen for. That's the yeah. journey that your life has been chosen for. But you can transcend that because the human spirit is designed to conquer something yeah. so even in what looks like failure until someone until someone dies they have not failed until yeah. someone <laughs> dies they have not failed because you can, you can turn it around the train that is sinking can come back up and sail on again true until someone dies and then, su and then success how do you define success Success, wow. Success is continuously realizing 
your goals that you predetermined in advance, yes. continuously realizing them. And, and there's nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with what you've predetermined and set yourself towards your goals. If they have to do with money, then that's it. If they have nothing to do with money, then that's it. A teacher at the primary school can be the most successful person because yeah, they are doing yeah, exactly what yeah, they were born to yeah, do. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 that. Do you have any books recommendation? <laughs> I was wondering when does, how does the book comes up because I saw something <laughs> book club or something like that. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> I love to read. I mean, I read readers. So every time when I was different people, I ask about books. Have you read The Art of War? Yes, I've read it. That's a go-to book. I love that. <laughs> and two. Yeah. Have you read? Have you read The Capitalist Sneaker? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> I've you read have. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you read well, what's my what's my recent book now have you read the 12 rules for life no i haven't who's the author jordan peterson oh, the yeah. first 12 rules for life not the second 12 rules for life there is another one there is a one that he just wrote now with yeah. the black cover he says another 12 rules for life Go for the first 12 rules for life. It's got a white cover. Okay. Amazing, amazing work. Amazing work. Uh, and, then, and then the monk who sold his Ferrari. Robin Sharma. I have read it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what's your dream for Africa? Africa, that Africa would wake up. My dream for Africa is that Africa would wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that. Uh, Africa must wake up. What? Oh, I, 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 okay. No, no, no. I'm saying there's so much to be done. Yeah. Even the Chinese are coming to Africa because where there is something to be done, there is a possibility and a potential for earnings. Yeah, and we Africans are sitting on the gold, and I'm not talking about the gold up there in Johannesburg. I'm talking about the unrealized development in our continent. Yeah, that is revenue waiting to be harvested. Africa must wake up, and my biggest dream is that Africa will work as one. Yeah, that will yeah. be this one global, or rather, economic hub in the continent. Oh, and I have to, I have to ask you, I know that you, you know what's going on. What's your take in on, on what's going on, the gender-based violence, the femicide? What's your take on that and what do you think should be done? <laughs> Man, you're tricking me. <laughs> no, I just want to get your, your views on different things, that's why. And the time is short. Yeah. So here's the thing. For me, gender-based violence is real. Yeah. Gender-based violence is real. And women and child abuse is real. I yeah. mean, if you don't I mean, especially on gender-based, just look at how women are looked at on the street, the way women are viewed on the street. Mm -hmm. They're the stalkers. Yeah. That are, so that is a sad tragedy, tra tragedy for our country. That, that is a sad thing for our country. And, uh, but at the same time, there's a balance here. Okay. Also, men, also men, they are dying. Mm -hmm. Men mm -hmm. are dying. Mm -hmm. Because this gender-based violent activity now is feeding another agenda, which is called feminism. The feminist agenda, the feminist movement. That is a movement that I would be careful to back and endorse. Well, I have a mother, I have a wife, I have yeah. a daughter. I love women. Yeah. I love women. But at the same time, I feel that men are confused as to their roles now because women are trying to be men. 
Okay, okay. I think we, for, for us to talk about I'm, that. I'm trying not to say too much. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying not yeah, to say too much. yeah, yeah, yeah. We will make an, we'll make another video for that another, another day. So what, 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 what I mean, what, think about this. Think about yeah. this. What's the role? What's the role of a father today? Think about what's the role of a father today? What happened to fathers? Are fathers really still important in their children's life? And a, a single mother will tell you no. Yeah. And a single mother is busy chasing the father away while the mother really needs that child to be part of their life. Or rather, the child needs the father. The father. But the mm. mother hates the father. So that, so there is a conversation there. Yeah. Which is, so let's leave it there. Yeah, there's a big conversation to be held on that. Any, any last word that you want to leave us with? One thing, man, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You don't know how much you have inspired me myself. Just the ability to be invited on a platform where I can do what I love, which is talking. So thank you. It's an opportunity that I treasure, that I value. I appreciate. I hope whatever you do grows. Thank I you. hope it goes crazy, man. Thank you so much. God Thank you so much. And we would like to, to, to have you again on this podcast. We would like to have you again I'll, next early next year. We would like I'll, to catch up with you. Oh, so, be, be, before you go, how would you like how would you, how would you like to be remembered? This is a big question which I asked all my guests. I lived, I loved, I was here. Beyonce. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Where can people get hold of you? Uh, Apiwe Nervu on Twitter. Yeah. And on Facebook, same thing, Apiwe Nervu. And on Instagram, same thing, Apiwe Nervu. Straight up. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.